Microsoft released ASP.NET 6 in November 2021. Now, a big part of this release was C Sharp 10. Within C Sharp 10, there's been a number of improvements and enhancements to the programming language. And this means for developers, we have new ways of writing code, which is going to be quicker, easier, and we're going to be able to do it with less lines overall. Brilliant, eh? Now, because we're all busy, there's a high chance you haven't actually looked at all the features that came with C Sharp 10. And this is where this video has your back. By the end of this video, you're going to learn about the six most useful features C Sharp 10 that I guarantee you'll end up using in your day to day development lives. Now, regardless if you're using C Sharp 10 already or you're planning on using it soon, one of the most important fundamental considerations that you should make is when are you going to smash on the subscribe button and help me out by clicking on the like button to help me with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't come across this channel before, my name is John and I do weekly videos on C Sharp, web development and developer productivity. So if those type of topics float your boat, do me a favor and as a little reward, I'll show you a picture of a flamingo. Ah, oh. so enough of this twas up. Let's get on and look at the best features of C Sharp 10. The first C Sharp 10 feature we're going to look at is enhancement to the interpolated string. Now, just in case you don't know what an interpolated string is, let's quickly go over an example. Now, the problem an interpolated string solves is complicated string building. Now, let's say you want to build a string which is composed of multiple different strings or a combination of a string and a variable. Historically, in C Sharp, the way you do this is either to use the string builder object, and this would result in loads of code, or the other way of doing it would be through string concatenation. Now, I have an example on the screen. As you can see, string concatenation would involve, you know, writing some string, adding a plus, adding some variables, adding another plus, and doing this could be really difficult just to mix and match your quotes. Also, it was bus ugly to look at. I mean, look at it. It's spread on multiple lines. Really confusing. Now, the interpolated string came out .NET 6 to the rescue to make our lives a little bit easier. And with an interpolated string, we have a nicer way of formatting complicated strings. So we define interpolated string using dollar. So we can then inject dynamic content using curly braces. So in this example, I'm injecting a variable. Now, the improvement within C Sharp 6 is the ability to use string interpolation with constants. Ooh. Now, one thing I will point out now is that if you're planning on using this, there is a caveat. In this example, you can see that I'm trying to do some sort of math operation. One plus one equals three. Yeah, can't fool me, yeg, yeg. And as you can see, I'm getting a compiler error. And the compiler error is that the expression that I'm passing in also needs to be a const. So it's just something to be aware of. The second C Sharp 10 feature we're going to look at is an enhancement around deconstruction. Now, to get my point across, I've created this very simple example. Now, I've created this get name method. It doesn't really make a difference what it does. The important thing is it's returning two strings or two things rather than one. Now, in order to access these two values at the same time, we need to use deconstruction. And historically, there was two ways of doing this, either using declaration or expression. On the first line, I'm using a declaration where I'm declaring my variables in the same line as I'm doing my deconstruction. Now, in the second example, I'm declaring my variables on a different line, and then I'm passing those values into my deconstruction. And historically, it wasn't possible to mix and match these approaches. However, that's now changed in C Sharp 10. In our new example, you can see that I'm doing my deconstruction here, declaring things into a new variable. And then in my second line, I'm also doing one new declaration. However, I'm also reusing my existing variable. And historically, Surprised or not, you couldn't do this. This would have given you a compiler error. Mm. So as you can see, just a nice another tip to make code much easier. I'm guessing you're only going to be using that mix and match style once in a blue moon. However, it's definitely a good improvement to the framework. Now, the last minor change we're going to look at until we get to the more complicated stuff is around property pattern matching. There's been a big push in C Sharp recently to improve its pattern matching capabilities. Property pattern matching came out in the previous version, and this allowed you to easily find objects using some search criteria. So pattern matching is really, really powerful. Now we've got an enhancement to it. So let's have a look at an example so it's crystal clear of what this improvement is. So as you can see, I've created this class called Superhero, 
and in it we've got two properties one is a string and the other one is an object now the improvement is how we can search for sub objects within patterns let's have a look at this location class nothing too complicated it's just a class with its own property called name and in order to populate that code you can see that we've just got a new superhero objects it's got location in it and i'm doing superhero location dot name perfect now historically if we wanted to do some pattern matching on that property value we would have to write some code like this so we do pattern matching using the curly braces and we can do it inside switch statement if statement all that kind of good stuff however if we were trying to access a child object we'd have to reference the property and then we'd have to use the curly brace and then within the curly brace we could then reference any names think about it we've got our superhero we're referencing location and then location has name so in our code we've got location curly braces name now that was a bit of a faff so the improvement within c sharp 10 is the ability to access things directly so as you can see we can just do location.name we can then do the value we want to do the pattern matching on and then we can return it the next feature isn't just a slight tweak in syntax it's a brand new capability now within dotnet 6 you have access to a brand new shiny http logger so you can see what's going wrong when you're creating apis and all that kind of jazz now in order to get going with the http logger don't need to install anything additional all you need to do is go to your program.cs we need to enable some middleware classic.net core stuff we've got my web application create builder i can do a builder.services add http logging to enable the middleware from here i can also do configuration on this example i'm configuring what builds are going to be logged so i can do http logging fields and you can see here i'm doing response code I've also got the ability to do things like request, request body, pars, protocols, trailers. There's a load of other stuff. Now, I've also got the capability of doing things like request headers, media type options, file size limits. There's loads of good stuff in here, so you can configure it to your heart's content. If you've been a .NET developer for a while, you're going to be very used to the pain of tidying up using statements. Now, whenever we're writing code, referencing other classes, namespaces, assemblies, that kind of stuff, what's going to happen is every single class you have is going to have a bunch of using statements at the top. What can happen very frequently is that you refactor something, a using statement comes obsolete, and as you can see, we get a warning. And tidying this is a bit of a pain. Now, there's probably a load of people out there shouting, oh, yeah, automate it. And yes, you can automate it. So using something like a code made, you can see here that we've got this automatic cleanup on save. So that is definitely an option. You also have the Sharper, which can do some of this for you. However, if you're like me and you have OCD and you need to clean up your code as you go along, you might be in the habit of constantly cleaning things up as you're going along, deleting things. Now, to save yourself all this time, C Sharp 10.NET 6 has a brand new thing called Global Using. And as you can probably guess, a global using is basically a global using statement. Hmm. Good name, right? Now, what we can do to create a global using is we can create a class. I recommend you put it in your root directory. You can call it whatever you want. Global using, global usings, usings, naming conventions. And to create a global using you can see that we use this global modifier so we define everything as a normal define it with global and then every single class in our project is going to get access to this using statement now as you can see underneath i can also do my declarations i can basically do all the normal using stuff i can just add global onto it the nice thing about this means that you know we're not going to have all that repeatability we're going to get rid of all that vertical noise within our class so when we're actually starting to look at things, instead of actually having to scroll down through our using statements before we actually get to the good stuff, we should be able to see it by just clicking on a class name. Now, the one thing you should be aware of when we're talking global using is they're scoped on a per project basis. So I've got my global using here. And as you can see, hopefully in my example here, I've also got another class library. Now, if I simply created my global using within this shared class library, and then reference these two projects so they talk together. 
these global usings aren't going to be automatically imported into this project. So you're going to have to create a global using per project within your solution. However, regardless, you might have to do a copy and pasting. Basically, it means that you're going to get rid of loads of craft in every single one of your classes. And for me, this is probably my favorite feature out of all of them in this list. The last C Sharp 10 feature that I'd like to talk about is something I think you'll use all the time, and it's called file scoped namespaces. So if you've come from a .NET past, this class can look very familiar to you. So at the top, we have our namespace, and then we define some class. Now to make sure that our files are nicely spaced and easy to read, we add in these indents, and then every single time we have curly braces, we add in more indents. Now, if we're creating every single class in a namespace, this means that we're always going to have one level of indentation, which is just a bit of a pain. And sometimes we have to add tabs and things don't line up. And you actually typically find you spend lots of time messing around. Now, the improvement in C Sharp 10 is file scope namespaces. And this is an example in this class. So as you can see at the top, all we need to do is namespace, put in our namespace with the semicolon. We can omit any of those curly braces, and then we can just define our class. So this is much nicer because it means we have less indent nightmares and hell to worry about. Since I first saw it, I was a bit skeptical. Now I can't believe I've ever been doing namespaces with curly braces throughout my 20 year career. Um, this is just a winner. I don't have to mess around with the tab as much, deleting things. It surprisingly looks like a simple change. However, it's actually saved me loads of time. And this, by far, is the biggest time-saving tip in this video. If you're looking for a quick and easy way to start playing with C Sharp 10, then I recommend you check out my sample solution. To get access to it, all you need to do is head over to my GitHub, which is John D. Jones-POC. From the repositories, find Netcore C Sharp 10, Click on there, clone it, off you go, it's free, you're welcome. Those six features are the ones that I really wanted to tell you about within C Sharp 10. And the reason for that is because they're the ones I actually see myself using on a day to day basis. Now, out of the other features, there are things like hot reloading, there's also minimal APIs. Now, I've done a whole video on minimal APIs, which is linked to in the description below. Spoiler alert, I'm not a big fan. However, you can find out why in that video. Now, what do you think? Do you agree that these are the best features in C Sharp 10? Also, can you see yourself using them? Or do you think it's just more complexity and more stuff for you to learn? Really interested to hear everyone's feedback. So let me know in the comments below what you think. We're now at the home straight. The only thing left to say is that if you have found some value from this video, don't forget to hit subscribe. And it does take me a lot of time and effort to make this. So to show any sort of appreciation, please click on the like button because it generally helps with the YouTube algorithm. Or leave a comment, that also helps. Otherwise, if you want to keep up to date with some of the content I create, you can subscribe to my Sunday session newsletter. The link is below, it's free. Otherwise, I hope you're having a great day wherever you are in this beautiful world. Until next time, next Sunday, happy coding.